Hello, I'm David Newman. This is the Orchestral Tools Instrumentation Series. And today we're gonna talk about the violin. A little bit something personal from me. Um, I was a violinist in my 20s and it's a very special instrument to me and it was a very special instrument to my father. I think the string playing at 20th Century Fox and all the other Hollywood uh, studios was very, very string dominated up to the late 50s. And a lot of this sound came from European expatriates from Vienna, Germany, Eastern Europe and, and Russia. Um, I think you could make an argument that the violin is sort of the soul of the orchestra. Generally, it has the largest number of uh, instruments in an orchestra, it's variable. Sometimes it's can be eight or 16 or 20 or 32. A normal orchestra will have 32 at least violins. Um, it's in Hollywood used as a, a kind of vocal type of instrument, uh, what, what we called an ario, arioso quality, um, a singing qu quality. Um, it's an infinitely variable instrument. There's all kinds of extended techniques and things that you can do with mutes and pizzicato and what you call coleño and all kinds of uh, other, other effects that you can use. But principally, it is, it is what is playing the melody. Uh, it, it, the strings generally take up the, the full dynamic range. So let's dive into the violin a bit. The violin can be divided into three parts, the body, the neck, and the head. The body of the violin is usually made of spruce and maple and contains the typical F holes. The neck and the head are made out of a single piece of maple. The fingerboard is attached to the neck and made of ebony. On the scroll, we can find the pegs to tune the instrument. The strings of the violin are made out of gut steel or plastic wound with metals like silver, copper, or aluminum. The strings are tuned to G3, D4, A4, and E5. The bow is made of a wooden rod with horse hair which is stretched between the two ends. To adjust the tension of the hair, a screw is attached. Rosin is applied to the hair to increase friction. Producing a tone on the violin can be achieved in several ways. Of course, the strings can be plucked by the fingers, but the most common way is to play with the bow. When the bow sweeps over the string, the string starts to vibrate. This vibration is amplified by the body of the instrument. There's hardly any orchestral work without violins or without strings. They have been the basis of the orchestra ever since the Baroque period up till today, even if it's classified as a chamber orchestra or large symphony orchestra, except of course for special ensembles. Richard Strauss describes the violins in his instrumentation as faithful companions, which in contrast to the brass, do not always require recurring breaks in order to carry on in longer compositions. The parts of the strings, namely the violins, for example, in a symphony, are always much more extensive than the brass parts of the percussion section. This is because the violins have many different tasks to fulfill in the orchestra. Violins are used as melody instruments as well as accompaniment. As accompaniment, they can play or hold rhythmic figures or repetitions, as well as long chords, practically unlimited. When the violins take over leading lines and melodies, they can either play them in one position, low, middle, or high, or play sweeping melodies that span a wider range of notes. They can also play very fast passages over several bars. There are usually between six and 16 first violins, four and 14 second violins in an orchestra, depending on the size. The second violins are traditionally more often used for accompaniment or to cover the melody lines of the first violins one octave lower. The range of the violin is from G3 to A7 
or G2 to A6 after the MIDI definition used in our sampled instruments. The lowest position of G3 to G4 is often used as an expressive melody voice, especially when played only on the G string, which then provides a very strong dark tone. All other pitches from D4 on are the range that is considered to be violin typical. The very high positions from F6 on are mainly played in solo passages. In the later Romantic period, there are also numerous 2D passages in this range which have a very radiant, cheering, or in extreme cases, a very exalted expression. The violin can play in all dynamics from the extreme pianissimo to fortissimo. We differentiate between the left hand and right hand techniques. When the left hand is moved while holding a note, slight variations in pitch and volume are produced. This is what we call vibrato. Multiple stages of intensity exist. Non-vibrato produces a flat and expressionless tone. Poco vibrato is the most used one in 2D passages. Vibrato espressivo is mainly reserved for solos or melodic lines, and the molto vibrato creates an exaggerated effect. By changing the bow direction on every single note without leaving the strings, the notes can be separated without sounding short, which is what we call détaché. A series of short strokes is what's called staccato. There is a distinction between the strong staccato, where the bow rests on the string between notes, and the flying staccato, where the bow is lifted from the string between the notes. Spiccato is similar to détaché, but for short notes. The bow changes directions on every note. This technique makes the bow jump due to its elasticity. This technique is produced by bouncing the bow multiple times on the string. Usually it is used in chords or accompaniment figures and is only performed in piano or mezzo piano.
Ricochet is played by letting the bow jump off the string. The player throws the bow on the string and the bow jumps several times. It works for playing just a single note multiple times in a row or to play a scale. Every note is very short. If the bow is thrown stronger on the string, the ricochet is slower. If it's thrown with less power, it can be very fast. Playing near the bridge of the instrument, a brighter, more glassy, shrill, and thin tone is produced. This is what we call ponticello. It sounds scary and very cold and can be played from pianissimo to fortissimo. Sultasto is the opposite of the ponticello technique. When playing the string near the fingerboard, a warmer and softer sound is produced. The dynamic is limited here up to a warm forte. When an open string is played, while a finger touches the string lightly on one of its nodes, where partial vibrations are developed, the corresponding overtone appears. This is called natural harmonics. This effect also can be produced artificially by playing a note, touching the string on the right spot simultaneously. It can be played from pianissimo to mezzo forte. If the string is plucked with a single finger instead of using a bow stroke, we call this pizzicato. For the Bartok pizzicato, the string is plucked with two fingers with more force, so the string bounces against the fingerboard. This sound is more percussive than the normal pizzicato. Pizzicato can be played from pianissimo to forte. Bartok pizzicato from mezzo forte up to fortissimo. Thanks for watching this video about the violin, and we'll see you next time.